everyone. I'm Rick Blackwell for the Education Network and WXCL TV, PBS for the Palm Beaches. This is Good Sports, the best in Palm Beach County School District sports, arts, and academics. Can you feel the enthusiasm? I'm at Jupiter High School inside the gymnasium. The number one volleyball team in Palm Beach County, according to the Palm Beach Post, the Boca Raton Bobcats taking on the second ranked team, the Jupiter Warriors. Let's show you the highlights. Sensational spikes. Incredible hustle. And two top teams. The Boca Raton Bobcats entered the game 12 and one. The Jupiter Warriors enter the game 11 and two. I watch a lot of Palm Beach County schools compete in a lot of sporting events. This was one of the most exciting games I've seen in years. It started in the first set. Boca Raton wins 25 to 19. These teams led by two of the top coaches in the county. Boca's Amanda Angermeyer and Jupiter's Blaine Betts. Here's what they told their teams after set one. Awesome. Out there and show them what your volleyball is all about. Just because they're down one set doesn't mean we can't win this. So play hard, play tough. Don't let them do that to you. Let's go. Be stronger. Let's go. 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 They call themselves the seventh man. They have set cheers. Someone, what week is it? Maggie. What week is it? Maggie. And they've been known to get the gym rocking. Oh. 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 Yeah. Uh, we just try to lead our girls on because we love our girls volleyball here at Jupiter High School and uh, One Tribe Warrior Pride. Uh, these games really bring our school together and everyone just loves how, coming out and having a good time here. Now on to the third set. Christine Jarman with the spike at the net on set point. The block goes out of bounds. Boca wins the third set 26 to 24. This match kept going back and forth. Kayla Woods with the nice set to Maggie Weeks for the spike. Jupiter won the fourth set 25 to 17. It set up a fifth and deciding set. You have to be that first team that starts strong. <laughs> In volleyball, you have to win the game by two points. Four different times, Boca would go up a point and would need just one more point for the victory. But Jupiter would not be denied. And up 20 to 19 in the fifth set, the ball lands out of bounds. The Warriors celebrate a well-deserved five-set victory. These two great coaches show great sportsmanship. They know they'll probably see each other in the state playoffs. The players and the fans got a little crazy after this five set thriller. I've got Julia and Stephanie. I gotta say that was one of the most exciting matches any sport that I've ever seen in person. That was just a lot of fun. What was it like to be a part of that? It was really intense and it was definitely difficult to stay controlled and to stay calm, but it was an amazing experience. Every time you guys play Boca Raton, we were just talking about it off camera. You guys beat them last year, I believe, in the regionals. So it just seems like it's such a great rivalry, even though you guys are in such opposite ends of the county. It's always uh, good to play Boca. They're such a good challenge for us. And also, like, through the season, it's good to have good competition before we get to higher level. Julia, last year's team accomplished so many great things, and there's a lot of new players this year. What's that transition like? I know you've lost a lot of like great players, but have the newbies kind of really contributed? Yeah, um, we lost a lot of players last year, and uh, the expectations were still high this year, but we knew we had to work really hard to get there, and all the um, underclassmen who weren't on the team last year, we actually had two people who got cut last year that made the team this year. Yeah. Um, they have gone so far above our expectations, and I am really excited to see where this team goes. Why is it every year that Jupiter has great teams and Boca has great teams? Is there just that tradition? <laughs> is it just kind of like, you better start playing great because you're wearing that Warriors colors? Yeah, um, I know that like a lot of like Boca and a lot of Jupiter, we all play club volleyball and travel, so that helps a lot because we all play year, like, year long, so we're never, never stop playing. <laughs> That's all we do. <laughs> so volleyball is life, you know? <laughs> 
Well, that's great. And you guys won round one, but probably you'll end up seeing them somewhere down the road. Yeah. Districts, regionals, but in the meantime, I'm sure you're going to celebrate this victory. So congratulations. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. I'm with Jaden Brown and Coach Blaine Betts. Congratulations. Thank you. That was just so exciting. Were you nervous when it was going back and forth there in the fifth set? I'd have to say I was most nervous third set because, you know, I thought we were going to do a whole 25-point game, not going <laughs> to lie, and not knowing what's going to happen next. It's a pretty nerve-wracking feeling, not going to lie. Coach Betts, you've been around volleyball a long time. That's one of the most exciting games that I've seen. What about you? It's definitely gone the longest that we've ever gone before. Five Matt, five sets going, you know, to the very end. That was it was intense. It kind of speaks to the rivalry, though. I mean, you guys are one and two this year in the county, and it just speaks to like how much you guys have really dominated volleyball the last couple of years here in Palm Beach County. Yeah, well, you know what? I love playing Boca because they're such a great team and they're such great competitors, and uh, they make we make each other better, and that's really important going into the postseason play. So it's always important for this match for us to play them to get better before we go into postseason play. Jaden, I got to be honest with you, when I saw all the players that were leaving that had graduated, I thought, okay, maybe this is kind of a transition year. You guys aren't going to let that happen over here, though, right? No. <laughs> what has been the key? Why have you guys been able to make that turnaround? I feel like we kind of had a brand new start. So it was like, you start over, everyone gets to know each other, you play together, and just like, you go from there. Like, and, and the constant's been the coaching, right? Yeah. Coach Betts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, being a new team, I think they've had to work harder to achieve the same goals as last year, which I think has pulled them together somewhat. Is it fun for you because you have so many young kids? Uh, is it? I mean, that was great. That was a fun experience last year. But you're probably doing a lot more coaching this year, maybe, right? Yeah. I mean, I definitely have to. You know, some of these younger players, we have to get them up to speed with some of this high-level volleyball, and they're doing a good job of catching on. Obviously, we're you know we're doing really well, so they're doing great. All right. Before they turn the lights out on us, congratulations. We got to get out of here. Thanks a lot. That was really a lot of fun tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I'm at Dreyfus School of the Arts in West Palm Beach. 17 years ago, Stephen Torres made history. He was the first student to be accepted and to enter one of the service academies. Well, Stephen is back on campus today talking to these students about their college and career opportunities. There he is. <laughs> Look at that, man. How are you? It's good to see you. 1998 Dreyfus School of the Arts graduate Stephen Torres says he owes teachers like communications instructor Ansel Deleuze for helping him become the person he is today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's good to good see, to see you. The ambush. Stephen met with students as a college admissions officer for the United States Air Force Academy. The first thing he shared with these seniors, his love of Dreyfus School of the Arts. So number one, be 100% glad you're at the school, no matter how much you want to complain about how hard his homework is. This school is awesome. And if you guys, I'm sure you've seen the rankings, I'm sure you've seen all that stuff about how great of a school Dreyfus is, not only in the state of Florida, but ranked nationally as a top high school. Steven left this awesome school after graduation in 1998 to enter the Air Force Academy. He graduated in 2003 with a double major in political science and foreign area studies. After graduation, he traveled the globe working in the Office of Special Investigations. He is proud to represent the Air Force Academy. I'm so proud. Uh, the Air Force Academy put me on a trajectory that I could have never ever foreseen myself doing, no matter what, even if I went to another college, um, number one. And, and number two, the privilege of serving my country and then coming back to my old, my old hometown, my old high school, and talking to students and saying, this is what I've done, and see them light up about, hey, that, that could be me. And for those students interested in a service academy, Stephen talked about all the positives. When you go to the Air Force Academy, or any of them, West Point, Annapolis, Coast Guard, Merchant Marine, you are making a decision not only to go to a top school, but you are making a decision to force yourself to be better than you are right now, academically, leadership-wise, military-wise. But he also wanted to make sure these students know all their options before they make any decisions about college and careers. I want them to know that and want them to talk to mom and dad about what college really looks like, what the options are when they're considering their college options, and then ultimately having the real conversation about this is what I'm interested in and this is how I could pursue that at College X. Let me tell you, Stephen really captivated those kids. He definitely had their attention as he spoke about his love for Dreyfus, love for the Air Force, and his love serving our country. What a great guy. Now we want to tell you about an innovative program involving the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and the NOPE Task Force. Recently, they took their anti-drug message to Seminole Ridge High School in Loxahatchee. 
Working together, the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and the NOPE Task Force have been saving lives since 2004. I don't know you individually. I care. I want to partner with you on teaching you what happens and how to prevent the bad choices. PBSO Deputy Jesse Miller calls the drug problem in our county an epidemic. Working with NOPE, Deputy Miller will visit dozens of schools and talk to thousands of students this school year. His powerful message starts with the large pictures of young people who have died of drug overdoses in our area, including 17-year-old Aaron Fulbrook. Aaron had an extremely special energy that every single person when he walked into the room could feel. He was also a drug addict who on the last night of his life mixed Xanax and Oxycontin. Aaron's mother discovered his lifeless body. He is cold to the touch and he is stiff because Aaron has been dead for hours. So she calls 911. I'm now going to play for you that tape. <laughs> My son is dead. Can you feel her desperation? Can you imagine how powerless she feels seeing her baby on the floor dead and there's nothing she can do? This is the sound that Aaron's mother hears as the body removal, removal service, perfect strangers, are zipping this bag over her baby's body. That is the sound that will haunt Aaron's mother for the rest of her life. This is where Aaron is today. In an urn, next to a fountain, on his mother's front porch. This is what Aaron's mother wakes up to every single day. At this point in the presentation, you could hear a pin drop. Stone silence, except for a few students who can't hold back the tears. We need these kids to understand that you do this, you can die, and there's, that's, that's an irreversible mistake. In fact, 247 people died of drug overdoses in Palm Beach County in 2012. Corporal Clifton Hamilton moderates the note presentation. He shares stories about the people in the pictures. After Joshua took his drugs, he called a friend and he told him, he said, I'm not feeling right, I took something. The friend thought he'd be okay, thought he'd sleep it off. You need to understand, he might not be okay, you need to tell someone. Corporal Hamilton says lessons can be learned from each victim. Doing this work and knowing that I may save somebody from that experience in the future, it just, it means a lot to me. Saving lives. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office is making a difference. That's why so many students will just say no and why so many schools will just say nope. I am extremely proud of the Sheriff's Office for getting involved in this. I'm very proud to be at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and be in a position to be on the front lines of this issue. I'm very happy that our rank has identified me to allow me to get in there and try to do these no presentations. I plan to do these presentations as much as I can. And now I'm in Boca Raton at the Boca Chess Center. This is a brand new facility. It allows young people and adults to come here, play tournaments, receive instructions. It's really a wonderful opportunity for chess players all across South Florida. Behind me, that's a third grader from Citrus Cove Elementary School in Boynton Beach. She right now is doing something called a simul. She's taking on 10 opponents at the same time. Who knew chess was an aerobic sport? Maya Tripathy gets a mental and physical workout taking on 10 chess players at the same time. Maya walks from board to board. She's on the move and always ready to make a move. Maya's pretty good against 10. She is amazing one-on-one. -on -one. In the last year, this Palm Beach County school student won a kindergarten through third grade Florida State Championship. She took home a huge trophy in Chicago for being the all-girls national champ. And Maya won gold for girls under eight in the Pan American Youth Festival in Columbia. 
That means she's number one in North America, South America, and the Caribbean. She practices hours a day, and now she can always find a game here at the Boca Chess Center. This facility opened up just a couple of weeks ago. They offer instruction for beginners and tournaments. Even in this day and age of video games, chess is becoming more and more popular. Already here at the Chess Center, they've attracted players from age 3 to 94. Maya's opponents were all ages, including her little brother. She won nine of the 10 matches today, proving once again, she is the queen of chess in Palm Beach County. Maya is right in the middle of playing 10 people, 10 different chess games. What's that like to kind of wrap yourself around 10 different individual opponents and the board looks in 10 different ways? How, how, did, how are you able to kind of comp compartmentalize and really figure out what to do next? Um, I focus on one board at a time. Is it difficult? Do you find yourself getting lost from board to board, or are you able to really pull this off? Uh, I'm able to really pull this off. Well, I know you are because you've been such an outstanding chess player. I know you're active in the Palm Beach County school system and, and part of so many different chess teams. Talk about some of your recent success. How much fun is it to been able to go all these different tournaments around the country? Um, it's really fun because I get to learn more about it. And what has drawn you to this game? Why have you fallen in love with chess so much to the point where you're playing it hours and hours a day? Um, because I'm really, really good at it. <laughs> it's always more fun to do something when you're great at it. What's it like being able to have a chess center here in Boca Raton? That's got to be kind of cool that you always got a place that you know you can go to and have a chess game. Good. That's a lot of fun, right? Yeah. So what are your goals for this upcoming school year? I know you got a lot of tournaments planned and, and you're going to be going back and trying to defend some of your titles and championships. What are your goals for the next 12 months? Um, um, like, try to practice more. Try to practice more and just take it one month at a time, one board at a time. That's been kind of the key to your success and, and you're so wonderful to allow us to come here and take some video of you today. So have a great rest of the day with these 10 opponents. Good luck and I wish you all the best. Thank you. I'm with Jeff Haskell. He is the owner over here at the Boca Chess Center. Jeff, congratulations right on this new place. It's got to make you feel great seeing all these kids having a good time oh, yeah. today. It's, it's wonderful that we can get a lot of our community activity and uh, many interested young, young children. You know, chess, we talked about, is gaining in popularity, but did you feel like there was a need out there for kids and adults to have a place to go play chess? Absolutely. I mean, currently there's a lot of kids and adults who are maybe going to a different club every night of the week or not playing so often, so now we have a permanent facility, which, which gives them an opportunity to come almost every day of the week. You know, some people would argue, you know, there's such an increase in video games, but maybe that doesn't lend itself to kids actually playing a board game like chess. But what do you say to that? Well, I think that uh, video games are, are lazy and not good for the <laughs> mind, but chess, you know, it's something that, you know, there's a lot of long-term life skills you can learn in chess that you can't from video games, perhaps. What's going to be neat about this place is you guys will have different tournaments, but there's also going to be maybe a chance for kids to learn how to play chess, and I know that you're a coach. When is a good time for a kid to really start playing chess, and what do you say to parents about maybe trying to get them involved in this? Well, the younger the better. Uh, we've had kids as young as three years old play here in our Friday night tournaments. And, um, you know, we have members of all ages who are excelling. And, and Maya, for example, has done so well on a national level. You were a national champ in the fourth grade, in the 11th grade. Did right. I get that correct? And, and you were also a Palm Beach County school student as well. Just reflect on some of your experiences in chess. It's really taken you so many different places, and you've had so many different accomplishments. Right. Well, uh, what I can say is that through chess, it's given me so many unique opportunities. I've been able to travel to many different countries, and I've learned a lot, you know, both personally and professionally through chess. All right. Well, congratulations on your accomplishments and this awesome chess center here in Boca Raton. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you very much. Time now for a look at Friday Night Football. Buggy night in Pahokee for undefeated Boca and undefeated Pahokee. Bobcats, Philip Santiago, screen pass to Pregnor Elmond, 44 yards later in the end zone. Boca stays undefeated with the 17-14 win on the road. Park Vista and John I. Leonard both looking for their second wins of the year. Park Vista's Junior Bedeau right up the middle. Cobras win this one 24-20. Park Vista stops a four-game losing streak. Trojans lost their first game of the season last week. Can they rebound against Santa Lucia's defensive battle? Santa Lucia's going deep, but Lake Worth with the interception in the end zone. The Chiefs do get a late touchdown to win at 7-3. They're now 3-3. Three
Suncoast comes into this game with just one win, but they have a sensational quarterback. Matt Dame throws deep to Austin Evans. He had two touchdowns in the game, a lot of touchdowns in this one. Suncoast wins it 35 to 34. Wellington versus Seminole Ridge. Seminole Ridge given up 60 points in the last two games. Wolverines on fourth down. Quarterback Blake Deaver has a great arm. Also a strong runner. He would not be denied. Now he hands it off to Mark Anthony Richards. Wellington wins a tough one, 24-21. Strike up the bands. Duncan Middle School in Palm Beach Gardens and Jupiter Middle School join the high schoolers at the Gardens-Jupiter game. Gardens gets the block punt. That would lead to a Hunter Aranda short run for a score. Gardens beats Jupiter 21-3. Dwyer had to play this Friday night without starting quarterback Toddy Santeo. He is out. Daniel Parr won a state title with the Panthers a few years ago at QB. He's now at FAU. Backup quarterback Eli Matthews comes in and looks good right to Isaiah Johnson. Dwyer wins it 42-13, still undefeated. And now, let's take a look at what's making headlines in social media this week. Way to go, Suncoast High cheerleaders who posted this picture of the team working with some young girls and having a lot of fun. Coach Parson at Seminole Ridge High School tweeted a really nice story about ninth grade football player Aaron Pringle. Aaron put a $5 bill in the Gatorade machine, received eight bucks back. Instead of keeping the money, he tried to return the cash. Coach Parson writes, what do you do when no one is looking? Looks like somebody is listening to my daily talks. It's homecoming week at Spanish River High School. A tweet to remind the kids to wear red, white, and blue. They're gonna dunk a teacher at lunch. There are also a lot of other great activities. Check out the fun at West Boca Raton High School. The boys got the crowd really fired up at the homecoming pep rally. The Park Vista Key Club working hard for UNICEF and other great causes and having a great time while they do it. Great job. Speaking of Park Vista, we did a story on their band last year. They are winning more trophies this year. Congrats to all the band members. Suncoast students, very colorful, getting fit and looking great after participating in the color run. I love those events. It was cheerleader alumni night recently at Seminole Ridge High School. The girls all got together to cheer on the Seminole Ridge football team. And they are also participating in Breast Cancer Awareness Month. A lot of the alumni cheerleaders came back for that. And Olympic Heights football tweets out Lion Pride. Good luck to the team this year. October is Disabilities Awareness Month. A group of students called Palm Beach Lakes High School Best Buddies kicked off the month with an ice cream social during lunch. Great job. The Wellington wrestling team is getting in shape for the upcoming season. They had a tire race. Now That sounds tiring, and you're looking at the winning team. Little League football in Jupiter had the thrill of hanging out with the Jupiter High School Warriors before the second half of their recent game. What a thrill for the young guys. Jupiter High tweets that they can't wait to see these young fellas out here for real. Meanwhile, just off the field, the cheerleaders at Jupiter High have been working with some young participants. Everyone had a great time showing warrior spirit. And Jupiter High School announces their students of the month. They are Carissa Tatum in the ninth grade. Jacqueline Smith for 10th graders. Your 11th grade winner is Amy Sardinia. And Amanda White takes top honors in 12th grade. And now a profile of Krista McAuliffe Middle School. At Krista McAuliffe Middle School in Boynton Beach, the goal is to educate young minds for the challenges of tomorrow. The school honors the legacy of teacher turned astronaut Krista McAuliffe who was one of seven crew members killed in the Space Shuttle Challenger accident. She inspires the teachers and students at the school to work together as a team and to dream big. Her motto, I touch the future, I teach. That message lives on inside these classrooms of the future. The students sit on exercise balls and work together on computers with double monitors. We need to break away from the brick and mortar format of traditional education and we need to infuse technology. Here, teachers and technology team up to teach U.S. history. Like in today's society, everything's technology, technology, and this whole room is technology. The lessons are online, allowing teachers to work one-on-one -on -one with students. It's really critical that you pay attention to each of those quizzes and all of that documentation and refresh it in your mind. And students zoned to attend Krista McAuliffe Middle can be part of the school's Information Communications Technology Academy. The program offers an innovative, 
integrated learning environment focused on computers, technology, and communications. The emphasis is getting students prepared for college and beyond. This is the technological era, so everyone's used to computers, iPhones, iPods. And they enjoy working on computers. In this class, students read books on the computer. To ensure they are learning to read and reading to learn, they take comprehension quizzes while online. And computers also play a major role in this science class, where students work in small groups to create a slideshow of invasive species. All right, I think we need to add a, a picture of a bird. There are also traditional classrooms with talented and caring teachers. Everyone repeat after me, respond. respond. Students have so many opportunities to reach their potential, from the many sports teams to playing in the band. There are also several clubs to choose from, like robotics. And students are encouraged to give back to the community. This all adds up to a special feeling at this school. We're like a big family. We all, we all help each other. And the kids here get so close to you. They will feel like this is your own family. This school is like another home for you. Family, home, Krista McAuliffe. A wonderful school in Boynton Beach. The school district of Palm Beach County, your best choice. And that's going to do it for Good Sports. Drop us an email. The email address is rickric at pbcgoodsports.com. Thank you so much for watching. To the student athletes inside the Palm Beach County school system, thanks for being good sports.